Hello everyone, today I'm going to have a look at and hopefully set up a pair of TP-Link CPE710 point-to-point uh, -point, or I believe they can be point-to-multipoint uh, 5 gigahertz wireless bridges or uh, access points and, and client devices. Let's see what's in the box. Uh, first off, let's see what it says on the box, I guess, which is 2x2 two two MIMO, MIMO antennas, centrally managed, although uh, I'm not going to be using them in that mode. I think they can be used individually configured, and they can be run in two different ways. One where they are directional with... Um, side reflector panels and one where they don't have the side reflector panels and it can cover uh, backwards into a building um, like that. So yeah we've got the web management platform which I'm going to use and the centrally managed Pharos control as well. Passive PoE which is a bit annoying because most of my stuff here and especially in say an enterprise setup you'll have PoE uh, switches and having 24 volt passive PoE is um, inconvenient because you'll still need a, an injector. And there's just some specs and features. We have a manual, so a quick flip through manual. So that's uh, if you want to read it properly, you're going to have to pause the video because I'm not going to sit here and read every single page. So here are the two setup options. You've got one with a directional aerial and then one where you don't have the reflector and supposedly it feeds back into a building. Why you do that is I wouldn't really know because if you're mounting this on the outside of the building and then immediately covering into the building, you're starting off with, say, a brick wall or possibly a, a plywood wall with insulation in it. Why would you start with something outside the building to immediately give you worse reception inside than if you had an access point inside. But um, who knows, maybe you'd mount it on a pole to cover a field and you'd point it away from the field without the reflectors, maybe. Basically assembly instructions. And just more confirmation here that it's passive PoE. It doesn't do active uh, 802.11 AF, I think is the, um, or maybe AT, the, uh, the active power over Ethernet, which is a bit annoying. Compliance responsibility to do with setting up the uh, country that you're in, which will set the power levels and the channels that you're allowed to use. And some stuff about air, air, air stream, max stream, air max, uh, which allows for quicker throughput between two of these devices. Um, but it would only mean that these devices can connect. You can't have standard Wi-Fi stuff connecting if you have max stream switched on. UK power supply or power lead, which is quite good. A bolt and a bit of mounting hardware. There's the passive. This is getting a bit dark now. We've not got the bit of paper there. Let's see if I can sort this out. Might be slightly better. The passive PoE injector, which has a wall mount, which is quite nice. It looks very much like the um, Ubiquiti stuff. This is model number TL-POE2412G, and the G probably means it can do gigabit throughput. Some of the early Ubiquiti stuff that didn't have the G annotation could only do 100 megabit throughput, which is a bit inconvenient. More mounting hardware. The device itself, and what do we have on it? We've got some lights on the underside, I think. Power light, Ethernet light, and wireless light. Over here we've got Ethernet socket and a factory reset hole. Uh, as a point of note on the side of the um, PoE injector, that is also, I believe, a reset button. Let me just 
press it and see. Yeah, there's definitely a button below that. On the top here, that's an LED, not a reset hole. More mounting hardware. Yeah, more mounting hardware or a cover. We'll go over the back somewhere. Yes, uh, goes on this to give it waterproofness or slightly more waterproofing. Jubilee clip, I think that's what this is called. And in the underside too, fairly heavy. Whoa. It's all gone wrong. Yeah, right, before I dropped everything, on the underside, uh, beneath that bit of cardboard in the box, are the two reflector side edge bits and the main mounting point. I'm going to put these together before doing anything else, so let's not read the instructions. And let's just go for it. So two lugs that match up here, although apparently quite difficult to get them to match up properly. And then it looks like you're supposed to be able to then drag down on them to get them to click in, but trying to keep it in place while you do that appears to be quite difficult. Cool. There we go. Gonna have to give it a good uh, clonk to get it to go in. Go. Cool. This is very difficult to keep it all lined up while you then give it a clonk. Okay, that's now in place. We do now need to put that back mounting on. I've got three in. That in fact, I might have all four in. Yes. I've no idea how I managed that, but that was a struggle. That is now... Not sure about that one. Yeah, that must be done. Oof. That was not a, uh, a pleasant, user-friendly assembly experience. Moving on to this bit. That should now be able to clip in, which it does. Connect these and their cables. So basically at the stage where now we should be able to use it. Whew. So this is what it looks like, fully assembled. With the ethernet socket on the underside. When you put a network cable in it, I believe you can then put that over it to uh, make it more watertight and less likely that water is going to be able to get and moisture is going to be able to get up through where that network cable is up into the device. Gravity is the, uh, the thing protecting it and the shroud. It certainly wouldn't, you know, if you had a pressure washer or whatever, that would definitely still get up into there. I've got a second one that I need to assemble. I'm not looking forward to it. Now, for my second time doing this, hopefully I will be more adept. Let's find out. Those two are lined up. I'm going to hold them together 
Nope. Oh, it's already a disaster. Hold them together. Yeah. Okay, that's the uh, that's the trick. This side. Let's try the same thing. Except it's going to be more difficult to get this one on video because now it's taller. Whoa. Right, I'm going to hold it with my thumb up here and then smack it down here. There we go. This thing. Really not looking forward to trying this again. Right, we're now on to assembling the final bit of the second one. That goes in like that and then give it a short sharp push and that's now assembled so we've got two of them side by side time to plug them in two very short mains leads but then if these are going to be in a network cabinet you uh, don't really need or want a very long mains lead Frustratingly, for this demonstration, they're not going to be very easy to get in shot because, whoops, there goes the mounting bracket for that PoE injector. Right, one's plugged in, and the other is plugged in. Um, let me see if I can figure out just quickly how to show you this. So those two are plugged in and both have green lights to show that they're on and powered. What I'm going to do now is lower the camera so hopefully you can see the lights on the Pharos devices when I plug them in as well. Here goes, I'm not sure I can get this into view very well. I'm going to do PoE on one of the injectors there and on the first Pharos. I'm going to plug it in now. So it's lit up. Its indicator for power is blue, solid, after briefly all of them flashed. Let me plug in the other one as well. As a note, unless you bought these pre-configured, they do not come as a bridged pair. There are some um, sellers in the UK who sell them pre-configured for about 15 or 20 pounds admin fee each. But these ones are not pre-configured. So that appears to be all that they do in uh, nothing mode. Uh, if I plug them, there's, they're only plugged into the PoE. They're not plugged into a computer or uh, network yet. So I'm going to plug um, this first one in on the right hand side into a computer. Now it's plugged into a computer the network light in the middle has lit up and I need to follow the instructions in the manual which is set a static IP address and access the web interface of this first Pharos. So at this point I now need to start doing a screen recording and it would also make sense to move on to another video about this so uh, it'll be one that is just the web interface rather than the setup and unpacking of these. If this video has been helpful to you it'd be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on but the subscriber numbers really do help. Um, yeah, Click on the description and hop over to the next video about the web interface of these devices. See you over there.